Test 3 has Model Organizer 2 support. Steam, GOG.com, and the original CD versions of Morrowind are all reported to be functioning. The Animation Kit, MLOX, Rymash, Test PCD, MGE XE patches, and MWSE all appear to be working. At the time of this video, more updates are in progress. Testing is limited, so if you are an experienced Morrowind modder, your feedback will be invaluable. Test 4 works perfectly when using the GOG.com and CD versions of the game. Steam's version works with MO2, but OBSE's Steam Launcher does not. For this reason, as OBSE is integral for in-depth Oblivion modding, the Steam version of Test 4 is not advised for MO2. There is currently no working solution for this. MO1 has a workaround for this issue, linked in the description, but the process does not work for MO2. A caveat when using GOG and CD versions is that OBSE and its plugins must be installed to the actual game directory for them to work. Oblivion, Data, OBSE, Plugins. This is not a bug with MO2, but rather a limitation with no current solution. There are specific cases where OBSE mod assets must also be installed to the data folder, such as Oblivion Reloaded's shaders folder. Even more so than with other games, be sure to test mods accordingly. The test construction set executable and OBSE loader executable need to be run as admin for the construction set extender to work. Due to this, MO2 also must be run as admin, otherwise the set cannot hook the virtual data directory. OMODs do not yet have support, but there are plans in the works to implement them. Currently you need to manually unpack OMODs, sort the desired files appropriately from what is extracted, and then repack your selection as a regular archive. FO3 and FNV not only work well with MO2, but they actually work better than they did with MO1 in some cases. A discovery made recently by Luthien and Jazz's Paris by reverse engineering MO1's BSA behavior is that MO1's BSAs cannot override one another, causing various issues that are not always apparent. Skyrim and MO1 don't have this issue, which is why it went under the radar for so long. MO2 coincidentally fixes this with the removal of BSA management. Since MO2 cannot yet hide specific files in the VFS, FO3 and FNV still use plugin space for disabled plugins. It is necessary to completely remove plugins from your load order rather than just disabling them to save plugin space. Depending on your system security settings, both the GEC and 4GB patcher may require both MO2 and the apps at hand to be run as admin. Follow the instructions for installing the patch on the mod page. Tale of Two Wasteland users, MO2 supports JIPLN's Fallout Custom Ini and Tale of Two Wastelands out of the box. The built-in sort button has been temporarily disabled since there is no loot support for TTW and, as it is now, can cause problems for the TTW installation. VR game versions such as Fallout 4 and Skyrim SE have support as of the 2.1.2 release. There are some settings issues that will be fixed in future MO2 updates, such as local save games and the sort button. As mentioned in the previous section, some apps require MO2 to be run as admin. Currently, if there are programs run through MO that require elevated privileges, MO2 needs to be started as admin as well. Mods that provide DLL files, such as ENB, may also require MO2 to be run as admin. Again, this is not for everyone, as many have reported that they never need to run MO2 as admin at all. There is work in progress to remove the need for this entirely. If you use profile-specific any files, you have to be careful that screenshots are not overwriting each other. This happens because screenshots are stored in game folders, and any files start with the same screenshot index number. To avoid this, regardless what game you are using, open the prefs any file for each profile. Locate the setting, I, screenshot index, and set the value a few thousand higher than each previous profile. If Profile 1 has an index of 0, set Profile 2 to an index of 1000, or even 10,000, and increase this number per profile. This assures that each profile names the output screenshots differently. As with all mod managers, moving an installation from one app to another, such as Nexus Mod Manager to Rybash or to MO, does not work very well. 
The only truly safe way to move from one manager to another is to note your load order and reinstall the mods from scratch. However, moving a setup from MO1 to MO2 is rather safe and simple. Before moving forward, please have a general understanding of how Mod Organizer works. First time users may be confused by some of the terminology. The first step, due to MO1 managing BSAs, is to open Mod Organizer 1. Now, for every mod that you have installed, move any plugin that was considered a dummy file from the optional ESPs window to the available ESPs window. This would need to be done for mods such as the official high resolution patches for Skyrim LE. There aren't usually a lot of these plugins, but if you don't remember how you set up your mods, you have to go through one by one. Otherwise, assets for these mods will not be loaded into the game when using MO2. The reason that we do this first is because MO1 informs you in the plugins tab via a broom icon if a plugin is considered a dummy. This is not foolproof, as not all optional ESPs are dummy files, and the plugin has to be present in your load order for the icon to appear. It at least provides some form of checks and balances. Once finished, open Mod Organizer 2. Create a new instance as shown in part 1 of 5 in this series, file pass and all. When finished, close MO2. Navigate to the Mod Organizer 1 installation directory and copy the following folders. Downloads, Mods, Profiles, and overwrite. Paste these folders into the directories that you just established for this new instance. Open MO2, Settings, and then the Pass tab. Make sure that Downloads, Mods, Profiles, and Overwrite all point to the folders that were just pasted. Finally, any executables such as Dual Sheath Redux, Finis, and Dindulod need to be re-added to the Run drop-down menu by using the Modify Executables window as shown in Part 3 of 5 in this series. This has been a Gamer Poets tutorial, Mod Organizer 2, Game Specifics, Whip, and Migration. Folks, give feedback to the MO2 devs regarding apps that aren't working. Modders who are experienced with the older games, such as Morrowind, please lend a hand and help test them. Most major updates for MO2 are posted on the official page on Skyrim Special Edition Nexus or pinned on the post section of that same page. Change logs are provided in the Logs tab and should be read as they contain information on how to use new features as well as changes in behavior. Developer builds can be found in the MO2 Dev Discord under Releases, Builds, where issues that may be present in the most recent Nexus release could already be fixed. Keep in mind that those builds are only meant for testing to help progress the development of MO2 via bug reports. And finally, MO2 is in serious need of C++ developers. Currently, MO2 is just a handful of guys spending what little free time they have to move this project forward, and they need your help. I can't emphasize enough how much MO2 would benefit from having more developers join the team. If you aren't sure how to reach out to them, let me know and I will put you in contact. Just be patient with me as I get a lot of messages. Folks, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. Thank you for joining me for this series, and I thank you for watching.